Hello everyone, it's me, Aaron, Professor Thorgy, and welcome to another episode of Game Room, the show on this channel where I just geek out about video games, but if you watch this channel regularly, then you know that I often geek out for comic books as well. And this month, both of those loves merged into a pop culture turducken with the release of Injustice 2, and today we're going to review what could end up being one of the best fighting games of the year. This is the next chapter in the story of the alternate reality DC Universe where Superman had one really bad day and it led him to becoming the tyrant ruler of the planet. If you played the last game, then you know that the heroes from the good DC Universe crossed over into this universe and stopped him. But this game does what almost no alternate reality story bothers to do. It asks what happened next. In this game, it's a few years later, and now Batman and his team of heroes are trying to fight crime as best they can in a world that is still very much broken after being ruled by Superman, while those heroes who are still loyal to Superman are waiting to break him free and let him rule again. But when Brainiac invades and starts destroying the Earth, both sides of this superhero civil war must come together and defend the planet. That's basically the gist of things, but I have to say, this story actually goes way deeper than I expected it would. This story actually has some amazing character moments. It progresses logically. You never once ask, oh, why are they fighting now? Every time characters fight in here, you think, yeah, that's exactly what would happen in this story. And it is loaded with heart. There is a moment towards the end of this story that actually really choked me up. That rarely happens in a normal video game story, let alone a fighting game story. There is no question in my mind that this is the best story mode I've ever experienced in a fighting game. And it's not just because of the writing. The actors each nail every scene and the facial expressions are some of the best I've ever seen in a game. It is crazy for me to think that when the developers were making this game, they looked at the story mode and didn't think, yeah, we'll just throw it in there as something. I mean, it's not the reason people are buying this in the first place, so who cares? But instead, they looked at it as being just as important as the fighting mechanics themselves. Speaking of the actual fighting, that's equally impressive. I was never the biggest fan of the Netherrealm games. I dug their characters and stories, but when it came to the actual fighting, I preferred the Capcom games simply because they were quicker and lighter. In this game, the characters still feel like they have weight to them, but they are quicker. It's like a weird amalgam of the type of fighting game I love and the classic Netherrealm games. And that faster gameplay fits perfectly for these crazy characters. But it also opens up to tons of variety, and that's what makes this not just a good fighting game, but a great fighting game. Every character plays differently, not just with their special powers, but even just with the way that they move. Yes, each character has similar combos, but those combos still move at different speeds, have different range, send them flying at different lengths, which sets them up for different follow-up attacks. Heck, even just the way that they jump and dash is different. The Flash moves fast like you would expect him to, but Swamp Thing is big and lumbering as you would expect him to be. I know I just said it, but I have to applaud them again. The amount of variety in this game is amazing, and that variety is made even more impressive with the gear. Yes, the gear has been a bit of a divisive matter with this game. Some people love it, some people see it as a problem, and I can understand that. Basically, this game will reward you with boxes full of gear that you can equip to your characters which will change their appearance, but it also buffs certain stats, which at first doesn't change much, but when you start leveling up your characters to high enough points, yeah, it will make a huge difference. You can make them a total powerhouse who just focuses on attacks, or a tank that focuses on defense, or try to just make them OP by equipping epic gear that boosts everything at once. And if you don't like the way your armor looks, but you like the boost it gives you, you can spend some coins to keep the buffs, but change their appearance. But this game isn't too greedy with that. You can't spend real world money to buy these boxes. You have to earn them in game. They have to be proof of your hard work. But it's not like Overwatch where you have to work for a whole hour to get one box where most of it's going to be duplicates of things you already have. No, in this game, there are dozens of ways to get boxes. I can get about 12 boxes in an hour just by doing daily challenges, playing the multiverse, which is full of theme battles, or joining a guild where you and other members of your guild fight for more boxes and gear. It is crazy to me how quickly you can get boxes and how fun it is earning them. But as I said, there are people out there who hate the gear because since the drops are random, they view it as luck earning you buffs that aren't accurate depictions of the time that you spent with these characters. Basically, they see it as luck deciding the victor rather than skill. And I can understand that. I mean, 
this is a fighting game, and all fighting games are supposed to set you on equal grounds with your opponent, and then the victor is supposed to be decided based solely on skill. So I can totally see how something that actually alters your powers, or even gives you brand new moves, based solely on whether or not you were able to open it from a random box, would indeed upset you and be a problem with the game. But yeah man, this is my review, and honestly, I don't care. Opening up these boxes and customizing my characters and actually thinking about how I want to build each of them is just too darn fun. I keep finding myself staying up late saying, just a few more boxes. I'll just open one more gold box and then I'm done. Yes, I have a problem, I'll admit it. And I briefly mentioned this, but there are tons of different things that you can do in this game. You can obviously play one-on-one -on -one online, but you can also go online and join a guild where you and everyone on your team will fight in different challenges to increase your score and of course get more boxes. Then you can also play by yourself in the story mode or go into the multiverse where you have to climb various towers each with their own challenges that can range from anything like ice rain down from the sky or summoning out other characters to fight alongside you. And these multiverse rings are updated every single day to give you a ton of variety. And of course, there is an arcade mode, but the arcade mode is hidden in the multiverse rather than being its own mode? Yeah, it's kind of weird to me that they did that, but hey, at least it has an arcade mode unlike some games I could name. My point is, there is a ton to do here. Not just in terms of modes that are constantly updating, but also with the countless pieces of gear to find. It is stunning to me that in a day and age where every fighting game franchise out there is trying to give their players less and then force them to pay for the amount of gameplay that used to just be expected of a game, I love that NetherRealm Studios has always been known for giving their players a ton of content and they're continuing to do that to this day. Although I will admit that I am a bit miffed that there is no trial mode where you can learn how to handle each character and learn each of their moves and combos. The developers said that they left that out because they believed that there was a better way to learn the characters, and for some people, that's true. But I still found myself all throughout this game picking up a new character and asking, wait, I must have done that wrong, is that what was supposed to happen? And this one is a small nitpick, but even though there's tons of content in this game, I feel like there aren't enough stages. If you sit down for Night of Injustice 2, you're going to run through every stage pretty quickly and then find yourself playing through them over and over again. I've played this game for less than two weeks and I'm already getting sick of seeing the exact same background so many times. But aside from that, yeah that's it. Those are all my complaints. I've tried to think of other problems just so that I could go into more details, but that's about it. Sure, from time to time the online matches aren't all that fair, I mean I can't be the only person who got matched with someone who the game told me I only had a 6% chance of winning against, I mean why even match me unless I got at least a 1 in 3 shot? But hey, at least the matches go through and they run pretty smooth, so I can't even really complain about that. End of the day, this game has so much content, such variety in their characters, a fun new gear system that could very well change the fighting game community, and hands down the best story I've ever played in a fighting game with an ending that gave my geeky little heart chills. I thought this game would be good, but I found it to be close to perfect. Injustice 2 gets a 9.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching everyone, and remember you can see me stream this game over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Professor Thorgy, and if you want to join the Thorgy Core, our guild on Injustice 2, I'll leave the code in the description down below, and of course you can always find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Professor Thorgy. Thanks again for joining us today, come back next time.